Eh, ya encontré cuál es el problema. A Rebeca la han hecho entrar a espectadores, no al panel de, de panelistas. Sí, ahora solucionarán el problema, no se preocupe. Muchas gracias. Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. We will be starting shortly. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome everyone to the launch of the How to Child Rights Service Guidance, How to Advance Children's Rights Using Recommendation from UN and Regional Human Rights Monitoring and Review Processes. The series is intended to be by civil society for civil society. We are therefore extra delighted that so many of you could join us today to learn from each other and share experience about what action can be taken to enhance the implementation of UN and regional recommendations on children's rights, but also about how these recommendations help us move forward our ongoing work on various areas of children's rights, such as gender equality, child protection, the right to education, or the right to a healthy environment. My name is Mona Mbikai, and I'm the director of UPR Info. My team and I work closely with civil society actors across the globe to support the engagement in the UPR process from the reporting stage to the follow-up of the implementation of UPR recommendation. I will be monitoring today's launch together with Laura Abado from Save the Children Sweden and co-lead for the How to Child Rights series. We're excited to share the guidance Please note the link is being shared in the chat box, aspiring that this documentation of experiences and learnings will guide other practitioners on how to engage in the so-called follow-up process. We will start off by listening to representatives from the UNCRC Committee and the African Committee of Experts on the Rights and Welfare of the Child. We will then present the tool and finally we will open up to the discussion part will provide an opportunity for written and oral input and will be about 45 minutes long. Please note that I will present the speakers later on. Before we start, we have some housekeeping rules we would like to bring to your attention. The webinar is being recorded and we will share the recording with all of you afterwards together with all related documentation, such as the PowerPoint presentation and relevant example, links and contact details shared during the discussion. There is interpretation available in French and Spanish. Simply click the language option that you see on your screen. You can click on the globe. Please feel free to type your name and organization and where you come from in the chat box. We will add a link to a short webinar feedback survey at the end, and which we kindly ask you to fill in as it will help us improve. Please be aware that we have child participants, so please use non-technical language as much as possible. Concerning child safeguarding, June Leo, is a child participation and safeguarding focal point person today. If any issues of concern to you arise, 
please make contact with June. We will put her email in the chat box for you now. Feel free to ask questions as the webinar unfolds. For that, we encourage you to use the Q&A space that you see on your screen. Please make sure you briefly introduce yourself and write who you intend your question to be given to. I will now say a word about the How to Child Rights series for those of you who are joining us for the first time. The How to Child Rights series is a series of practical tools, and with tools I mean guidance, toolkits, or case studies that are developed by civil society in collaboration with academia and others. They are written mainly for adult practitioners from within the civil society sectors, but all the children who are active as human rights defenders may also find them useful. The objective is to inspire each other on how to apply the human rights based approach in practice in our daily work and show how we can contribute actively in making legal and political commitment to children a reality. The How to Child Rights series was launched on February 16th and have a range of tools already available on a webpage hosted by Save the Children Resource Center. The webpage is being updated with new tools and a collection of already existing tools relevant for different themes and that fit with the criteria of the How to Child Rights series. So please do not hesitate to contact us to share with us practical guidance and case studies you find useful for your work and that others can benefit from. As far as from budgeting allowed, most of, but not all tools are translated into French and Spanish. We're intending to translate the web page into Spanish and French. We welcome all support we can get to review translated text as we want to break the language silos as much as possible. These tools are being tested and piloted as much as possible in different contexts and will be improved and updated based on your practitioner's feedback. The tool being launched today will be piloted between July 2022 and June 2023. Beside the collection and the website, the series is about collaboration between various organizations and also university and the UNCRC committee. A special organization we want to highlight and thank today is Child Right Connect who has accompanied this series from the beginning. Our most recent partners are the Global Partnership to End Violence Against Children, the Right to Education Initiative, CIPRODENI, and Redenas. We welcome any entity that is keen on child rights to join us and contribute to the series content and reach. We also welcome co-funding and other creative ways to sustain this work. Today is a fourth thematic launch of a series of webinars about these tools, and we will give you more information about this at the end of the webinar. For information, the first three launches concern tools on children's rights and the environment, on child participation, and on the UN Committee on the Right of the Child Simplified Reporting Procedures. Today's launch is focused on how can civil society advance children's rights using recommendations from UN and regional human rights monitoring and review processes. As an overall introduction, I will briefly show you which parts of the reporting, monitoring, and review cycle we are talking about today. As you can see on the slide shown, there is a reporting stage. Review stage, a stage where recommendations are developed, and the last stage is the beginning of the new one, the implementation and follow-up step. The follow-up stage is where concrete measures will be defined to address issues of concern. Let's take the example of child marriage. What should be end-to-end -end child marriage? Measures, both at the policy level, as well as the level of human rights education at the community level. For instance, the legislation will have to be revised. Safety net program will have to be developed social protection will have to be put in place, campaign to raise awareness about child marriage and the impact of child marriage. Because when we speak about child marriage, it has consequence on the health of the girls. Oftentimes the girls are married to older person and there are cases of gender-based violence. 
the girls then drop off of school and cannot access an education which perpetuates the cycle of poverty. We will talk about this recommendation, also called concluding observation or UPR recommendation, and how they can be used to advance children's rights once they're adopted by UN committee, like the UN committee on the right of the child or by regional committees like the African committee of experts on the right and welfare of the child or the human rights council session. We are really happy to have us with us today Benoit van Kersplich, members of the Committee on the Right of the Child, Adam Zememfes, Secretary of the African Committee of Experts on the Right and Welfare of the Child. Uh, Ten Law will be presenting us the guidance on the How to Child Rights Series. And after that, we will start a discussion that will be later kicked off by several speakers, which will be present later on. Now I would have the pleasure to give the floor to Benoit. And Benoit, I have a question for you. So Benoit, how does the CRC committee do follow up to its own recommendation? What do the UN agency do to support states to follow up and implement their recommendation? And can civil society organization complement the committee's work at the country level? Benoit, you have the floor. Thank you, Mona. Thank you, uh, Laura and uh, the organizer for this uh, invitation and uh, to this very important event and also uh, launching those tools. Uh, we are, uh, of course, uh, always very happy to see that uh, uh, a lot of people are uh, active, uh, actively involved in uh, using the concluding observation. So uh, let me start, if uh, you allow me, by uh, um, recalling, of course, the importance of the concluding observation uh, and, and the uh, fact that those concluding observations are often seen as an, an outcome of a process, the end of the process. Um, while it's, uh, I would say, it's only the beginning. It should be seen as, uh, as that. Um, uh, it's a um, roadmap for the future. Um, uh, and, and a tool uh, for all the stakeholders to uh, ensure that the, uh, something is happening. Because uh, we have been working uh, to uh, uh, develop those and to uh, draft those uh, recommendations. Um, and now it's up to the state and the stakeholders at national level to do something about it. So I will come to, to your, your, your question uh, in, in, in a minute, uh, but just uh, to um, set the scene. Um, and so this roadmap uh, contains a lot of recommendation and this is the, the um, goal that uh, all the actors should uh, follow to uh, ensure the implementation uh, and to identify who should do what, to raise awareness about them uh, at national level, to uh, ensure that children also uh, have access to those recommendations, that they are written in a way that, uh, uh, or presented, translated even in a way that the children can uh, uh, use and understand them and uh, claim for their uh, rights. So all those actors, of course, have a very important role to play. Uh, the civil society is crucial in this, uh, in, in this regard. And uh, it's also uh, the, the, the body that or the bodies that will uh, bring those recommendations to the uh, attention of uh, members of the parliament, members of the, of the government, uh, local government at all levels, uh, and identifying who should um, uh, looking at uh, those recommendations. On the side of the committee, uh, to um, uh, answer to your question, on the side of the committee, up to now, we we haven't had uh, put in place a, a specific uh, follow-up mechanism of our own recommendation. Uh, it may be seen as a pity, but that was the way uh, we were working. So that means that after the, uh, we issued the recommendation, um, if there is nothing, no interaction with the state, we will only wait for the next report and see how much the state has improve the situation between two reports. This will change slightly in, in the future, and there are a few uh, exceptions. And so this is uh, something that you can uh, keep uh, in mind. We have been responding uh, positively to all requests to uh, exchange, discussion, uh, even country visit 
uh, after the recommendation, just to have a discussion to uh, help raising awareness, to support the state or other actors in the implementation of those recommendations, to um, uh, have exchange also on uh, 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 if there is a need for uh, uh, capacity building or uh, uh, strengthening the, 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 the capacity of the actors to uh, implement uh, these recommendations, technical assistance, for instance. So this is um, the kind of follow-up that we can ensure from our side. Sometimes there is a follow-up when we receive uh, individual communication uh, concerning a violation uh, uh, of children's rights in one specific country. This is in the case where um, uh, the country has ratified the third optional protocol that allows a child to um, send uh, a complaint to the Committee on the Rights of the Child. So we will uh, look at that situation in regard to the recommendation and what we know about the country. And then sometimes we also uh, go to, um, uh, we, we, we can uh, uh, start an inquiry if we are informed and uh, aware of uh, grave or systematic violation of children's rights in the country. So this is uh, the inquiry procedure. And then we can start an inquiry. We can uh, even uh, visit the country. We can have uh, exchange with all the state stakeholders. And we can also, of course, refer to our own recommendation to reinforce the uh, recommendation. So um, these are uh, different means that we are using to ensure that there is this, uh, this follow-up uh, in place. Um, but to be honest, I mean, the follow-up uh, relies uh, very much on uh, national, local actors. And uh, I think that uh, among the audience today, we probably have a lot of people who have uh, uh, experience in using the recommendation to uh, try to advance their own uh, agenda. I hope I replied to your question. Um, I don't know if we, you want me to um, continue on other uh, topics or um, how you want to proceed. No, I think it was ex excellent. <laughs> Thank you very much, Benoit, for highlighting the important role played by civil society actors in, into the, the follow-up and the role they can play by you know, uh, making their government accountable. Uh, liaising with uh, not only the government, but also local government, uh, the parliamentarians, and the different means also that you have. Yeah, uh, at one point, yes, too, but I don't know when, when you want me to, to speak about it. I, I would like also to inform the audience about um, the future uh, of the situation. Do you want me to um, address this now? Yes, you can yes. highlight some okay. important part of, of the reform. And... Exactly, because um, uh, everyone or most of the, the, the people who follow the, the whole uh, treaty body system and human rights system at uh, international level uh, is aware of the fact that uh, um, the, the, the system is not sustainable in the way it works now. Uh, if I take the Committee on the Right of the Child, we have for the moment a, a backlog of more than 71 uh, reports, 60 uh, reports on the convention itself, and then reports on the optional protocols. Um, and uh, if we follow the current rhythm of work, uh, this means that we have uh, uh, enough for the two, two and a half and th or three coming years. So that means that the country that has sent its report, uh, let's say last year, will probably re be reviewed in uh, two and a half or three years time. This report will be uh, kind of obsolete. We will need uh, uh, update. We will need to uh, gather more information about uh, uh, the, 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 the situation in the country. Um, and, uh, and everyone will be uh, frustrated because uh, it, it doesn't follow uh, properly the, the, the rhythm of uh, sending the report. So uh, we have been working with all the other treaty bodies, with the UN system, and uh, uh, there has been a lot of scenario on the plates. And uh, one of the idea uh, now is to um, pass from a five years uh, term between two uh, reports 
to an eight-year uh, delay. Uh, so each state will be required to uh, send its new report eight years after the previous one. So it's longer, but in fact, uh, the, the situation uh, is just uh, near uh, that uh, length for the moment. But we will introduce now an, uh, a midterm follow-up uh, procedure. So that will make us give us the possibility to uh, go back to the state and to look at uh, four to six main priorities that were identified in the beginning and to see where are you now, uh, what are your plans, and how do you plan to uh, fix this problem uh, before the next uh, round of uh, report. So that's one of the mean that we have uh, been working on. Another mean will be to uh, generalize what we call the simplified reporting procedure. You had uh, a webinar on that and you have a tool on that. Uh, uh, and so people are probably aware of that. So that uh, means that the uh, procedure starts with a list of question, list of issue prior reporting to be sent to the uh, state before uh, the uh, reporting process starts. So we will um, be able to uh, deal with our backlog uh, through uh, this, uh, this uh, system. Um, and uh, we will also try to implement a, a predictable calendar. So that will be uh, for the committee to know uh, uh, which countries are coming up in the, in the coming years, but also for the countries themselves, the state parties, they will know that they will have to report to the CRC in that year, to this other committee in that year, so they can plan the reports. And uh, uh, sorry to interrupt you. If you can just please uh, wrap up. Wrap up. We will yeah. have and so all these reforms should uh, allow us to uh, speed up the process and to ensure that uh, every state is coming uh, to each committee in a, a time frame that uh, will allow uh, proper reporting. Thank you for highlighting this important uh, element for the follow-up and reform of treaty bodies. Uh, now we'd like to give the floor to Adiam. Don't forget you have the possibility to ask your question in the Q&A space. Uh, can I proceed? Okay, Please thank you, you very much. Adiam. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, let me just So, share. Adam, um, my question for you, can you tell us about how the ACRWC does follow up and what would you recommend to all CSOs present? What should they do with this recommendation? Thank you uh, very much, uh, Mona, for the question. Uh, I will briefly go through uh, the presentation and as I go through it, I will definitely respond to the question. So, um, I uh, work at the Secretariat of the African Committee of Experts on the Rights and Welfare of the Child, which is now based in Maseru, real estate too. Uh, so the committee is a regional treaty body that's tasked to monitor the implementation of the African Charter on the rights and welfare of the child mainly. So just to highlight uh, from the committee's perspective, the the, so, the, the sources of recommendations, uh, it provides recommendations to countries uh, using various uh, of its mandates. Uh, the first and the most important one being, of course, the concluding observations and recommendations of the committee that come out uh, following the consideration of state party reports by countries that have ratified the charter. Uh, the other source of recommendations uh, for the committee are uh, its decisions on communication. So the committee also has the mandate to receive complaints uh, on alleged violations of the, the, the provisions of the charter. And after consideration, if the communication qualifies uh, for the merits and after uh, going through various processes, then the committee will issue uh, decisions and provide recommendations to countries on the measures that should be taken to ensure full implementation. The committee also, uh, undertakes investigative missions on uh, specific issues and following uh, investigative issues, uh, it will, after investigations, it will also issue a report which contains detailed recommendations to that specific country concerned. Uh, the committee might also issue letter of urgent appeals on that are very eminent to which uh, the committee requests countries to take um, eminent action as well or urgent actions. The committee could also issue resolutions on specific countries, and those will also contain uh, recommendations to, to countries. 
There are also um, other uh, uh, outcome documents which the committee will provide its recommendations on specific thematic areas to countries. So for, for instance, uh, its outcome document on the celebration of the Day of the African Child. Every 16th of June, the committee celebrates the Day of the African Child. So recommendations can also come uh, in outcome document uh, formats. Uh, um, Ajem, yeah, 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 I wanted to tell you, you can move to the next slide. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, so uh, to, um, I will merge your question uh, in responding or in addressing the issue how CSOs can uh, follow up on the recommendations. So the first uh, issue, uh, first sorry, of all, I really, yeah. really appreciate, yes? I'm sorry to interrupt you. Could you try to put full screen so people can see better the, the, the presentation? Uh, yes. I'm so sorry to interrupt, yeah. No problem. Is Thanks. it okay now? now? It's much better, yeah. Thank you so much. Okay. Okay, uh, so um, really appreciate uh, Save the Children and all uh, organizations involved in uh, developing the, the tools that uh, we're launching today, which actually provide detailed um, on how CSOs can uh, undertake a selection, communication of those uh, the recommendations of the committee, as well as advocate and monitor the implementation of uh, the those so in in selection in selecting i think what CSO should take into consideration is also to follow up uh, what's going on at a regional and global framework with respect to the countries that they're working in or with respect to the issues that they're covering on so for instance if a country uh, if there's a, an organization that's specifically working on corporal punishment a follow-up or a thorough uh, anal follow-up should be done by CSOs to see if countries uh, where corporal punishment is prevalent are being reviewed at the CRC or even at the African Committee. So following up uh, uh, what's happening at regional and gl global frameworks will definitely uh, assist CSOs in actually following up the, the, the recommendations so that uh, they can also input even in the process before the regional treaties have um, issued their recommendations. So uh, it's important to identify if our countries have reported to the committee uh, to see if there is a case pending against uh, the country or with regards to the thematic area that the CSOs are covering and uh, to, um, to see uh, a way uh, that CSOs can participate uh, in the sessions of uh, the committee, which is an, which is now open to uh, CSOs to actually follow up on what's going on. Uh, but more importantly, also, I'd like to uh, also emphasize on the issue of uh, utilizing the avenues for recommendations. So uh, recommendations will come when states engage the African Committee of Experts on the Rights and Welfare of the Child. If a country does not report to the committee, the committee may not be able to issue concluding observations and recommendations. So it's also very critical for us, uh, for CSOs to see how they can push their countries uh, or the countries that they're working in will uh, um, adhere to their reporting obligation to the committee. Uh, they can also litigate cases before the committee so that the committee can actually issue recommendations and decisions on issues that they're working on or to the countries that they're working in. So even uh, requests can be submitted to the committee for investigation so that the committee can also uh, issue recommendations. So. Uh, even before the committee comes up with recommendations, there are avenues in which CSOs can actually um, engage the committee so that the committee can have a recommendation on sel selected issues. Uh, and then following, once the recommendations are out, the, the, the one critical issue that CSOs can uh, play a role is uh, in terms of translation and dissemination of the recommendations of the committee. Of course, the committee will uh, might issue its recommendations in the working languages of the African Union, but translating them uh, down to the, the working languages of countries and local languages is very critical so that it's accessible by stakeholders. And then to draft an action plan uh, that uh, will assist in terms of uh, tracking the mo and monitoring the implementation of those recommendations is uh, very, very critical as well. And um, another way is to engage the committee during its follow-up activity. So now this will give me a chance to respond to your question, Mona. So the committee does uh, follow up on its activities and in, 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 on its recommendations and various activities. 
it undertakes follow-up missions two, three years down the line after it has issued concluding observations or decisions. The committee would go on the ground uh, to undertake follow-up mission, engage uh, the, the, the various government ministries as well as CSOs and assess the level of implementation and further urge the countries to actually implement its concluding observations and recommendations. So this is one avenue where CSOs uh, uh, can engage with the committee as when it goes on the ground, it also uh, engages with CSOs. The committee also uh, has a, now a working group on implementation of decisions, which is one of its special mechanisms. And through this special mechanism, the committee further uh, undertakes an assessment of the level of implementation of its decisions. It's now currently undertaking a study. So CSOs can actively engage with the committee to also input on this. Uh, but also the working group also has the mandate to undertake uh, follow-up missions. Uh, furthermore, I think CSOs can also engage uh, in supporting uh, the government uh, in terms of implementation. So action, developing the action plan uh, can also be, I think, done in collaboration with government so that it's more effective and the government is also on board. But beyond that, um, I think CSOs have a better technical capacity uh, to also support uh, governments in terms of uh, implementation and um, to continuously monitor uh, the implementation and to put the government uh, to be accountable. Uh, in the interest of time, uh, if I can go to the next. Yeah, yeah sorry, I. So just uh, to highlight some of these, for instance, that the committee has observed in terms of the role of CSOs uh, in, in following up recommendations, for instance, when it went to follow up uh, the, its concluding observations and recommendations in Zimbabwe, the committee observed that uh, the concluding observations of the committee were actually published and disseminated by Plan International, uh, CSO that's based in uh, the, the country office of Plan International in Zimbabwe, in collaboration with other stakeholders, and a, a, a very detailed work plan uh, was developed by uh, stakeholders and shared to the government. So when the committee was there, the government was about to uh, input and adopt the work plan on the implementation of the concluding observations of the committee. Uh, in Ethiopia, uh, the committee observed that the concluding observation was translated by partners. Uh, and the government had also shared the concluding observation to countries. The same in, in Ghana, for instance, the, the, the recommendations were sent by the government to uh, partners uh, so that partners were able to identify in which areas that they will be able to provide technical and financial support towards the implementation of uh, the concluding observations. Um, do I have time, Mona, to, to, to provide an example on the impact of the uh, or yes, bri briefly I'll give you one okay, minute thank you. yeah so uh, it, it, it might be a question as to why we should involve uh, that much in terms of um, following up the implementation of uh, the recommendations of the committee and one might ask is it really worth it and um, it's when the committee actually does um, receive it's uh, the periodic reports of countries in which they also report on the implementation of the concluding observation of the committee uh, on its on their previous reports or when the committee goes on the ground that the committee actually observes the impact of uh, concluding observation. So, for instance, Rwanda following the, the consideration of its initial report by the committee. Uh, undertook a revision of its constitution in 2015 to rectify some of the issues that didn't exist in the previous uh, uh, constitution. Uh, Kenya adopted uh, a law that prohibited FGM after uh, the concluding observation issued by the committee on, in, uh, on its initial report. So when Kenya reported its first uh, periodic report, it indicated that it had already issued the, the law that the committee recommended for. Uh, in Namibia as well, uh, the Child Act was lingering as a draft for over 15 years. And then uh, one year after the committee issued the concluding observations, uh, the government of Namibia actually passed the Child uh, Act uh, uh, in that country. And uh, also in, in Zimbabwe, following the recommendations of the committee, the, the, 
judicial, uh, their, their constitutional court took action to rule on age of marriage as well as, as, well as corporal punishment. And then the government started to revise uh, its law. So it's, uh, it's, uh, these are just some examples which will highlight that uh, if we do actually a proper follow-up on concluding observations or any other recommendations that come out from treaty bodies, we can actually um, uh, record uh, some actual uh, change in law policy and also other administrative uh, procedures. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Adiam, for enlightening us about the African Committee's follow-up procedures and how best civil society organizations can engage. Thank you also for highlighting the, the impact of the work of CSOs and the committees. Uh, I will now hand over to Laura. Laura, can you tell us more about the tool, why this tool, its content and structures, and how it can be useful for civil society practitioners wishing to advance children's rights. Hi, Mona. Hi, everyone. So uh, I will tell you a bit more about this guidance that we're launching today called How to Advance Children's Rights Using Recommendations from United Nations and Regional Human Rights Monitoring and Review Processes. You have seen the link several times pasted by, by our colleague uh, in the chat box. So I developed this tool together with uh, Anita Go, who's a consultant, and uh, with inputs from several practitioners, colleagues and partners from civil society uh, across the globe, but also from experts, including uh, UNCRC committee uh, uh, members. Uh, I wanted to, to, to give a bit of a background. So I, it was mentioned several times today, but still uh, just to mention that in international and regional human rights bodies monitor and review progress made on the implementation of human rights treaties on a regular basis and continuously issue recommendations to states to improve the situation of children's rights in each country. But uh, so for this, in this guidance, we're talking about UN human rights treaty bodies like the UN Committee on the Rights of the Child that monitors the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child, but also other UN bodies treaty bodies like the, the Committee on Elimination of Discrimination Against Women that monitors the implementation of the Convention on Elimination of Discrimination Against Women and others. And by treaty bodies, we also mean exactly uh, as ADM has been representing the committee, also regional bodies, regional treaty bodies, like the African Committee of Experts on the Rights and Welfare of the Child, which monitors the African Charter on the Rights and Welfare of the Child. But there's also other such uh, bodies like the in Europe is the European Social Committee. They are all independent experts who monitor implementation of their own treaties and conventions. But in addition to that, we also this guidance looks at the Universal Periodic Review process, which is under the UN Human Rights Council, which is also a space for child rights and for any other human rights. It's a review by states of states. Um, records uh, on human rights in each country. So just to say that this tool really looks at these cyclical processes of reporting where civil society has a space, the state has a space, uh, and other stakeholders can provide information and children can provide information. But we're not talking about the, the, the sustainable development goals reporting uh, using the voluntary national reviews, for example. This will be the subject of another tool which will be launched uh, in July. We're not talking about resolutions that also include recommendations to states that can be on children's rights. This is also another guidance that uh, is being developed right now and will be uh, launched later this year. And we're not talking about the special rapporteurs. Uh, you know, there are thematic special rapporteurs of the UN and, and the African Union and the inter-American system. There's the commissioners. So there is these mandates everywhere who also monitor some topics, some is human rights issues and some states progress but this is not covered in this in this tool either so just to go back to the role of civil society and children themselves uh, they play a crucial role in monitoring progress and challenges for children's rights on the ground many of us uh, civil society practitioners know about these processes and often we contribute to these recommendations by submitting complementary reports but we do not systematically follow up to see what happens once the states receive them and whether they are actually used to improve the situation for children on the ground. So what we, what, uh, although at the same time, many of us do not know that these, process, these recommendations exist. So it's a missed opportunity to actually 
uh, use them in, to help us really achieve what we want to achieve in our work. So really this guide aims to empower and inspire us, inspire civil society practitioners to follow up, use and make the most of these recommendations as part of their daily work to advance the realization of children's rights in their countries. So why did we develop this guidance? It's, uh, it's kind of answered already, but really four main reasons. One, it is to make sure that when our states receive concluding observations or UPR recommendations, we do not just disseminate them and translate them for adults and children, but we also do more. For example, do a strategy to continuously monitor progress, uh, find stakeholders and partners to do this together with, work with children themselves to use these recommendations for law reform, policy reform, use them as evidence for research, for advocacy, for communications, uh, to analyze child, child rights situation analysis in a country is really useful to know what did, they can, what did these expert committees say, for example, about uh, the right to education, health, or, but also in litigation, uh, it's, it's very, it's not super used, these recommendations, but it is used by, by some, and so all these things can happen and can be done with these recommendations. These recommendations are also underused, so this is my second point, they're, they're not sufficiently used, in fact, in development and humanitarian sector programs and projects, and in advocacy and communication about child rights, often because they are not well known. So therefore, this this tool really wants to help uh, everyone to, of us, all of us, to know where to find these recommendations, how to use them as part of our kind of backpack of child rights tools and arguments that we can use to push for the change we want to see for and with the children in each country. And the third reason is that this guidance aims to encourage us to realize that our role as civil society organization working at local, national, international level is complementary. We're not alone. <laughs> it's really, as we heard already, uh, Benoit from the UN committee at the, um, who represents the African committee, there are already these committees who are monitoring compliance of states. Uh, but there's also efforts from the UN, Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights, the UNICEF as well, they're also supporting the states to actually, for them to be better at navigating all their recommendations across ministries and uh, so that they can organize themselves better to report on progress, but also to implement the recommendations they get from the different bodies. Imagine how many recommendations you can get as a state on education or on health, because this right is covered by, by so many. And of course, I didn't mention national human rights institutions, but there's also, of course, this as a stakeholder that is complementary to our efforts as civil society. So putting us in this context of, of these other actors who are also doing efforts. And this tool also then building on that encourages us to look at, a child, at child rights recommendations from an integrated and holistic perspective, which means that we want to align more to what states are supposed to do. They also supposed to do, they're supposed to look at child rights, for example, um, uh, child marriage uh, from a holistic perspective, which committees gave them a recommendation on it and how can they implement it and how can they collaborate between the different ministries we as well. If we also see, uh, we want to work on children with disabilities or we want to work on education, health, uh, violence against children, gender equality, we also need to know that these recommendations all of these recommendations the state got. It's one state, it's the same state, it's children are the same. And so we need to be aware of all these uh, sources of these recommendations. So who is this guidance for? It's really for everyone, even if you did not take part in the various steps that were mentioned today. So the reporting step, et cetera, you don't have to have reported, uh, used uh, for submitted in a complementary report in order to use the recommendation. Um, I will just go, I know the time is, we are a bit late already, so uh, just to give time for the discussion, uh, I want to just say that this guidance, you will look at it, it will be available in French and Spanish during the, by this end of the, uh, this week, uh, but it's in English right now and the annexes that are in French and Spanish are on, on, the, on the website. Part one answers several questions. It answers what are UN and regional child rights recommendations? How do they strengthen your work on child, uh, your work and the work of your organization? It answers you what are UN monitoring and review processes? Why, where and how to find these recommendations? And what does follow up mean? And uh, what is integrated follow up that I just mentioned? So all these things are mentioned uh, in this first part of the tool. And the second part really is a step-by-step -step 
guidance to help you decide what type of follow-up activities you can do with the recommendations. There's annexes. One annex helps you to put together all the selected activities that you want to do. Um, every country will be different. Every organization will select different things. But also it will guide you on how to track progress. There is also a downloadable uh, table where you can organize per, per theme. There's an example on, on uh, corporal punishment that was also an annex to this tool, but there's also a downloadable annex which you can upload and adapt to your context. And really it's four steps quickly. It's about selecting the recommendations, finding them, mapping them, selecting to see what can you prioritize. Step two is about communication and raising awareness about them. All this translation uh, and, and these kind of issues also are covered there. Step three is about designing your advocacy plan. And there's a set of activities you could choose uh, just for ideas. And please, if you have other ideas, just share with us so we can update this tool. And step four is about how to monitor the implementation, uh, monitor the progress, document your successes, uh, your, 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 case, your case studies, and report back, prepare to report back uh, at the next opportunity to the UN and regional mechanism. I will stop here and uh, please feel free to ask the questions in the Q&A box and not in the chat box, but in the Q&A box. And I will, uh, I will leave the floor again to Mona before opening up maybe to the, uh, to the uh, um, discussion section. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, Laura. Thank you for presenting the, the tools and how it can guide CSO's work and the importance of having a holistic and integrated approach. And I really appreciate how you say that, in fact, the locally informed recommendation that will be formulated by uh, UN and regional mechanisms and how the recommendation and observation by those uh, international and regional mechanisms have to feed, in fact, uh, the work at the local level in terms of advocacy and implementation of the recommendation and observation. So just a kindly reminder, uh, please put your question in the Q&A box. Uh, I saw already a, a couple of them and, and not in the chat box uh, to make sure that colleagues address them. Uh, if it's too specific for speakers, please specify that and who you are and where are you from. Uh, we will now move to, discussion, to the discussion part, and I will uh, head over to Laura. Thank you, Mona. Thank you so much. So, um, uh, everybody present, at this time, I want to tell you, we have we tried to do this launch to make it much more interactive. And it's really difficult with this short time when you were launching a, a, a tool, but we're trying. And uh, so one way to do that is like that. I want to I wanna, uh, open just to explain to you that the first step of this discussion is in three steps. First step is really to ask you to uh, ask Rudina, my colleague now to take over the um, screen and share a Mentimeter link. You will see it in your chat, in the chat box, uh, the link. So please go in there. We want to really collect from all of you, uh, what, what are you doing with the recommendations? What would you like to be doing? And if you want, you can add uh, several times. You don't have to write only one time because there's limited amount of words, but just to collect as many uh, ways that you're actually using the recommendations in your work and doing the follow-up, uh, just so that we can also share with you after this, uh, this webinar, uh, we will do a follow-up email with all of you and we will share with you all what was shared so that you also know about each other's work. And also, if you want, you can add your, your contact details if you're happy that people uh, reach out to you for more information, what you do. So if you work on a theme, mention the theme. If you work on a specific group of children, mention the, that you do that and where you come from and, and the organization you work with. After that, so five minutes for that. And then we will ask uh, some of our, uh, friends who, who also have experience uh, in this work from different countries to also share with us uh, what they do. And we'll see if we will have time for Q&A live or not. Um, but uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's try. So please, five minutes for you. Write what you do. What would you, be, what would you like to, to do more? Uh, there's the same questions in French and Spanish in the chat box. Uh, so uh, please go ahead, and we will we will uh, resume in uh, at fifth yeah in uh, in four minutes now. So please go ahead, and and share and put your country if you can, country organization, so we know a bit who's who's sharing if you like, so that we can also follow up with you maybe in the future. 
Thank you. I will comment a bit, but please don't stop writing, uh, just to save also time and to, to, to make you realize some of you work with, use the recommendations for litigation. Um, some uh, are working for national human rights institutions and you're, work, you're using these recommendations in your work. Uh, and corporal punishment initiative, you said that you share these recommendations that relate to corporal punishment uh, for your, our networks. Um, I see that some of you use them in the management of child protection cases. And even in the inputs to parliamentarians, I can see in France. In regional litigation, actually, I'm really uh, happy to see also examples that are used in litigation because it's not often we, we see that. Thank you so much. Do you also, if any of you also works directly with children or you are uh, ch children who are uh, human rights defenders that will work on the call uh, with recommendations, please also share with us. Do you, some of you use it for uh, child rights analysis studies Lobbying with ambassadors of the National Children's Parliament, South Africa. Some of you do annual state of children report based to see the progress on these recommendations. Those of you who work also uh, on uh, like with different uh, recommendations from different treaty bodies and, and charter bodies and the UPR, please mention that as well. So we see how many of you are actually working integrated like across, across this, the, the board of all these sources of recommendations. I see also some of you promote them in your communications. So unfortunately, you will, some of you uh, who don't have access to Mentimeter, please feel free to use the chat box as well to share. Uh, unfortunately, we will not be able to talk about everything that's written, but uh, we will share them with you. So thank you so very much for, for taking the time and uh, continue sharing and writing um, if you like, you know, uh, on Mentimeter or on the chat box as we continue talking and you will hear other colleagues now what they are doing and what they could be doing more or better or you know, uh, changing. So I will move directly to our colleagues who, are, who, are, who have been preparing to, to kick off this discussion. Um, I, I would like to, um, uh, to, to invite uh, for two minutes, uh, more or less, <laughs> the, uh, Rashida, Ak Rashida Akter, my colleague, uh, my former colleague, and she's uh, now working at Plan International Bangladesh. Then I will also uh, ask Veronica Mustikone from the, from the Secretariat of the CRC platform of Morocco. Then I will ask Vera Karanika from the Institute of Statelessness and Inclusion to share her experience. They work on children um, uh, in the situation of statelessness and the right to nationality. Rebecca, and Rebecca, I will, uh, adolescent or no, you're 18 year old from uh, the regional network of children and youth, Red Nias, and you, you're joining us today uh, this early. Thank you, Rebecca, as well. So you will come after Vera. And Otto Rivera, I will keep you uh, the best to the, to the last. <laughs> I don't know how to say, but Otto uh, as well. So I will not reintroduce you each time. Uh, please just, uh, I will give the floor now to Rashida and 
to Rashida, you speak. I will. I would like directly Veronica to take over. Vera, then after Veronica, uh, Rebecca, and then uh, uh, Otto. But before Rebecca speaks, I just need to give you some instructions because it will be in Spanish. So over to you, Rashida, and uh, thank you for uh, for for being here. Uh, thank you, Lord, for giving me the opportunity. So I have been involved uh, with the National Childers Advocacy Coalition in Bangladesh since 2013 and have had the opportunities to prepare and submit civil society reports to UNCRC and to the UN Human Rights Council. And while working with civil societies, I found many of us do not know how and how frequently they should follow up uh, to the recommendations uh, that our state receives or how to establish a regular follow-up system, how to start uh, an evidence-based advocacy and how this work could contribute to improving the child rights situation in our country. So they missed opportunities that could help us to strengthen our work. And I learned this work by doing and experiencing in my work. Now I found this guidance is a comprehensive one that would help civil societies, individuals, as well as the practitioners to learn the mechanisms and build a regular follow-up uh, process. And the steps are elaborated simply in the guidance. Planet National Bangladesh is already engaged uh, in following up this of the process for a long time. And uh, I believe that this guidance will help us to disseminate the idea of how to child rights to the wider civil societies to advance child rights differently and strongly. Also, this uh, tool could help, uh, help all my colleagues working on different areas of child rights, like gender equality or uh, like child marriage, et cetera, to make use of UN recommendations to strengthen their advocacy. So thank you for uh, uh, listening me and thank you for giving me the opportunity. Thanks. Hello. Thank you so much, uh, Rashida. Um, I, I give the floor uh, now to uh, Veronica, please. And Veronica, Vera, could you take over Veronica directly after? Thank you so much. I'm sorry for, for, for uh, doing this. It's just, it goes much quicker. Good afternoon to everybody. And thank you all for this invitation. It's really a pleasure for me to, to be here and to speak a little bit about what the platform Studio Maroc um, does um, in, for the UPR, um, UPR process and the CRC reporting process too. Um, so uh, when the platform Studio Maroc was created uh, officially in uh, 2017, uh, they were just published the, the last uh, UPR's uh, recommendation. So at that moment, we, we drew up our first um, action plan uh, after the analysis of the recommendations that were uh, accepted and uh, noted uh, from um, uh, by Morocco, and and then we uh, so we built up our um, our um, action plan and we continued um, following up the the progresses that were made or not in the country. Um, and uh, which recommendations so were already or are um, now uh, realized and not. And in the same time, uh, we try to, to use both uh, CRC observations and UPR recommendations in other uh, actions that are conducted by the platform. So they can, may, uh, they can be uh, advocacy or uh, communication actions or uh, uh, sensitization action and information and so on, and we target um, uh, gover governmental institution, so um, uh, the society, the children as well, and all any actor in the society that has a role uh, in child protection. And so, in 
in March, uh, last March, we have just submitted our um, our report to the UPR um, uh, cycle, and um, in order to to write this report, we started from um, uh, first make a, an analysis of. Uh, which were the last uh, CRC uh, ob observations and um, and uh, UPR recommendations, and what has been done uh, from the last uh, UPR cycle until today, <clears throat> and uh, and also we analyzed which were the recommendations effectively accepted uh, by Morocco and realized or not. So then we, we worked divided in uh, thematic groups and we tried to identify uh, our thematic priorities nowadays if compared to four years ago. And we, we used um, the last uh, CRC observations and UPR recommendation in order to support uh, what we were Telling by our uh, recommendations or what we, we we are claiming, and now we are on a, uh, on the phase on the step of planning our next steps. Um, so we we plan to to participate to the pre session, and but first we are trying to organize our work in Morocco. So. It, to start our advocacy or continue our advocacy process uh, in, in the country and to prepare each other um, to, to all the priorities, uh, thematics we, we put uh, first in our, um, in our report. And for sure, once uh, the, the new uh, last recommendation will, will be published, we, we will build up or adapt our, um, our work also in, in what uh, will be uh, recommended and uh, accepted or not by, by Morocco. So that's uh, briefly what, what we, are, we are doing in, in, in this uh, process. Thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you uh, for having me here today. Uh, my name is Vera Karanika, and I work as Educational Program Assistant at the Institute on Statelessness and Inclusion, or ISI for short. ISI is the first and only human rights NGO dedicated to promoting the right to nationality and the rights of stateless people globally. Uh, it is estimated that more than 15 million people across the globe are stateless and every 10 minutes another child is born stateless. Uh, as part of our advocacy efforts at ISI, we are working to increase the visibility and presence of statelessness on the human rights agenda, uh, among others to enable easier engagement with recommendations on nationality and statelessness issued to states uh, within the human rights system. Um, we developed the ISI database uh, on statelessness and human rights. The database enables the user to compare and analyze recommendations uh, using different filters such as country, human body, and themes such as uh, the child's right to nationality. Uh, now let's see how the database could be utilized to bridge UN recommendations with national advocacy efforts. Imagine that you work at an NGO that focuses on child rights and is preparing a submission to the UN Committee on the Rights of the Child. You have identified that the child's right to nationality is not upheld by your country uh, by, for example, failing to guarantee that stateless children born in the country can acquire nationality. You want to explore how the CRC committee has addressed this issue in other countries to strengthen your submission and feedback in national advocacy. Well, this is what actually happened uh, with the advocacy efforts of the North Organization for Asylum Seekers, or NOAS for short. The law in Norway failed to guarantee that stateless children uh, born in the country could acquire nationality. NOAS used uh, the opportunity of an upcoming review of the country before the CRC com committee to draw attention to this gap. Uh, 
Uh, they utilized ISI's analysis of CRC recommendations to clarify that the system in Norway fell short of protecting the child's right to nationality and submitted comments to the parliament. Due to this inter intervention and prior to the CRC committee's dialogue with Norway, a new administrative instruction was adopted, allowing stateless children born in Norway to acquire Norwegian citizenship. Other success stories of combining engagement with UN recommendations and national advocacy by ISI and its partners include Madagascar, uh, where after years of engagement with the nationality code, uh, it was amended to allow women to compare their nationality to their children on equal terms with men, and South Africa, uh, where nation national advocacy, litigation, and CRC recommendations were used to bolster um, advocacy efforts on the ground to promote the right of every child to uh, nationality. So with these examples, uh, we see that engaging with UN recommendations and utilizing databases like the ISI database, uh, we can advance the child's right to nationality and advocate for progress uh, in children's rights. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, um, Vera, Veronica, and, and Rashida. Uh, just to sum up a bit what you have been uh, sharing. Um, so we've heard from you, Rashida, about uh, the importance of follow-up and working uh, together with partners, but also how, how the, the recommendations can be useful for issues such as gender equality and child marriage that, uh, that Plan International is working on uh, in the region. Uh, uh, Veronica, it's really great to hear how how you can make use of recommendations to inform uh, the next reporting opportunities. Uh, so in the guide, this is referred to as part of the follow up part or the sorry the the monitoring uh, uh, part, the last uh, step, which actually encourage to reuse recommendations to see the status of them and use them for the next reports. But also how you work as a coalition in Morocco. Uh, and um, and Vera, really interesting to hear that you have this database and how you make use, uh, which actually you focus on specific uh, children who are uh, stateless, stateless or don't have a nationality, uh, and how you can make use of these recommendations uh, to track them first. To have this database in itself is very useful, but also to see how you can use them in advocacy these recommendations and advocacy to make a legal change in different countries. So thank you so much. I will now. Um, turn to um, uh, Rebecca. And Rebecca, I don't know, can you just say if you are here so that we hear you? Uh, I would just uh, want to say to everybody who speaks English, who does not understand Spanish, um, Rebecca will speak in Spanish, uh, but she will, my colleague uh, Roberto will be translating. So just pay, be patient. He will be translating uh, regularly when she, was, she will be speaking. Uh, Rebecca is from the regional network of children and youth, Red Nias, which is based, and she's based in El Salvador. She, she belongs to one of the members of Red Nias. And, uh, Red, and they follow up uh, on the recommendations that the United Nations Committee on the Rights of the Child and the Human Rights Council address to their states. And the question to you, Rebecca, if you are here, I hope you are here to know how, how do you do this work um, uh, in, in El Salvador and in Red Nias uh, regionally, you children and young people from the region? Thank you so much. Hola. <laughs> Great. Um, Rebecca? Uh, no, no, I don't hear you. Muy buenos días para algunos y buenas tardes para otros. Mi nombre es Rebeca de la Red de Niños, Niñas y Adolescentes de Salvador Renais, miembro de Red Niñas, y en nombre de esta red regional agradecemos la invitación a este espacio. Felicitamos el esfuerzo por contar con una guía que permita monitorear el cumplimiento de recomendaciones que los órganos de tratado emiten a los estados que dan cuenta sobre el cumplimiento de derechos humanos en general y de la niñez en particular en la región. Eh, pero, ¿cuál ha sido nuestro rol como niños, niñas y adolescentes en el seguimiento de las recomendaciones que tanto el Comité del Niño de Naciones Unidas, el Consejo de Derechos Humanos y la CIDH e incluso la Corte Interamericana ha emitido a los estados en materia de derechos humanos de niñas y niños?
Hello, everyone. Good morning. I am Rebecca. I, uh, good, uh, good afternoon for someone. My, uh, I am from Children Network of the Salvador Renais, member of RENIA. Uh, in the name of this uh, regional network, we say thank you for the invitation. We congratulate to afford to have a guide to monitor compliance with the recommendation issued by the treaty bodies to a state report and complies with the human rights in general, children's rights in particular in LAC. But what, what have been our role uh, of children and adolescents in following on the recommendation of the United Nations uh, Community of the Right of Child and the Human Rights Council and the Inter-American Commission on, on Human Rights and even uh, Inter-American Courts. We have issued to a state regarding human rights uh, Children Human Rights. Nuestro rol ha sido primero de denuncias de violaciones de nuestros derechos a través del diseño y la presentación de informes alternos desde la experiencia de niños, niñas y adolescentes y ser oradores en presesiones, tanto del Comité del Niño como del EPI, así como en audiencias temáticas con la CIDH. En segundo lugar, hemos tenido un rol de promoción de las recomendaciones y para esto hemos estudiado las recomendaciones que se emiten y sacado versiones amigables que permitan su difusión con otros niños, niñas y adolescentes. Incluso hemos elaborado videos, por ejemplo, un pliego de recomendaciones emitidas por la CIDH hacia los estados para el tema de los sistemas nacionales de protección. Las divulgamos a través de un video editado por nuestras propias voces. Um, our role has been first denounced a uh, violation of the, on the right, uh, on our rights, also designed the presentation of alternative report from the experience of children and adolescents to, to be a speaker and precisions um, and the community of the children and universal periodical review as well in the, mat, uh, in the thematic hearing with the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights. Secondly, we have played a role in promoting the recommendation. And for this, we have studies and recommendation issues producing a friendly version for children, uh, allow their dissemination uh, to other children and adolescents. Uh, we have uh, elaborated uh, videos, for example, um, of recommendation issues by the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights. Uh, to the state and issues of the national child protection system. Uh, we sharing this uh, video with our boys. Asimismo, hemos tenido un rol de incidencia ante los estados a través de organizar conferencias de prensa para divulgar las recomendaciones y demandar planes de monitoreo y en donde los niños, niñas y adolescentes, junto a organizaciones de la sociedad civil, hemos ofrecido todo nuestro apoyo para que los estados superen las mismas y estas no sigan siendo repetitivas en cada ciclo de presentación de informes o denuncias de casos de violaciones de nuestros derechos como niños, niñas y adolescentes. Valoramos que un monitoreo efectivo de cumplimiento de las recomendaciones sigue siendo un gran desafío y por eso la guía de monitoreo nos permite eh, nos parece oportuna ya que permite eh, hacer ordenamiento y tener una película de cuáles son las problemáticas comunes y ponerle atención a este tema de lo relativo que por cierto sería oportuno añadir una casilla más de los 12 puntos a explorar de cuáles son aquellas recomendaciones repetidas también eh, la guía y su uso oportuno eh, permite hacer una comparación de los temas de preocupación que cada instancia, ya sea del Comité del Niño, eh, el Consejo de Derechos Humanos, a la CIDH, la Corte marca como recomendación y sugerencia de, que, de qué hacer para darle cumplimiento. También eh, podemos tener un parámetro o indicadores de cumplimiento, es decir, cómo estaba ese país en tal tema y en cierto tiempo, en, lo que, en qué pudo avanzar de acuerdo a las acciones que hizo para superar aquella situación observada. Y por último, podemos hacer una mejor incidencia al poder definir un plan de monitoreo más ordenado y con, y con responsabilidad que en, el, que en el mejor de los casos, este plan se diseñe de manera coordinada entre los estados con la participación de la sociedad civil y de niños, niñas y adolescentes.
Um, also, we have a, a, a advocacy role before uh, we organize the press conference to share the recommendation and demand monitoring plans. We are uh, where children and adolescents and together with the so, uh, civil society organization, we have uh, offered uh, all our support for the state, over, overcome them, and they, and they don't continue to represent the each circle of the presentation of report compliance of case of violation of, violation of our rights. As children and adolescents, we believe uh, that uh, is effective monitoring and compliance with the recommendation continues to be challenged. And that's why we consider a monitoring guide to opportunity um, scenes like um, to make uh, an alerting to have flying which are common problems and to pay attention to issues of relativity uh, why uh, why would appropriate and add more box of the 20 points to explore, of which are those uh, reprated uh, recommendations. The guide, the guide, uh, the guide um, uh, comparison issue to concern that uh, each body, whatever um, the community, community or right of the child, and Human Rights Council and the Inter-American Commission of the Human Rights or court uh, make recommendations and suggestions on what uh, to do, comply with them. Uh, we can have indicators of compliance uh, that uh, it's to say how, uh, well, how the countries was uh, issues and certain period of the time uh, each to to was able to advance according to the action tool and, and took their over the situation of church. Finally, we can make a better impact to being able to find more uh, orderly monitoring plan uh, coordinated between state and uh, civil society, uh, especially children and adults. Desde la RADNIA nos complace haber estado al tanto de este proceso de diseño de la guía y seguiremos acompañando su difusión y uso con la expectativa de que las recomendaciones sean superadas y no sigan siendo temas repetitivos y esos indicadores que los estados y la sociedad civil y los niños, niñas y adolescentes reportemos en cada ciclo de informes o audiencias sean indicadores con rostros humanos y se reporten más avances que retrocesos. Muchas gracias por permitirnos participar y recuerden nada de nosotros y nosotras. Uh, from Red Nias, uh, we pleased to have uh, award this process designed to the guy and we will continue to combine uh, the, sharing, the, the sharing it and sharing information uh, for the, with the recommendation. Uh, we, we are over uh, remain repeat use and those indicator uh, the state and the uh, civil society and children report in each circle to of review. Uh, this indicator uh, need to have a human face and report more progress than feedback. Uh, thank you so much uh, for this space. And remember, nothing without us, no, nothing about us without us. No, nothing about you without you, Rebecca. Thank you so very much for, for sharing with us. It's really inspiring, I'm sure, for, for many uh, children and youth across the globe and for us adults as well you're also a young adult but you can see that a lot of messages here sent to you with the hearts and claps but it's because um, it's really encouraging to see that you're actually making use because you're aware of what are the possible uh, entry points and the recommendations your states are getting uh, you're actually able to use them as well in your advocacy and your work and that's really encouraging and encouraging us all to do the same um, learning from you and, and, and from others uh, that have shared today. So thank you so very much. Um, I would like to give the floor now to um, my, my friend uh, Otto. Otto is uh, 
executive director of the National Charles Coalition Ciprodeni in Guatemala, and uh, he will be the last, uh, uh, the last uh, kind of not the last, but uh, he will share his experience very briefly before we also try to take some of your, uh, you who have raised your hands and wish to speak and share. Uh, over to you, uh, Otto. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. Good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you for a special invitation for Cipro de Guatemala. For us, for us, there are two principal guidelines for the using a recommendation from the United Nations and regional monitoring process. First, First, the recommendation allows us to train children and adolescents on the commitments of the state to guarantee and protect their rights for the, their compliance with their accompaniment. Training the participation of the children and adolescents is a tool to build dialogue with local authorities. To from the Observatorio de Derechos de la Niñez, or Observatory. We took this uh, recommendation from monitoring the main indicators results. We used to carry evidence-based advocacy with national authorities. We periodically inform child and adolescents and a society about the situation of the human rights for their attention. For us, it's very important the guide for continuing the, the processes. Thank you for your attention. Thank you so much, Otto, for, for sharing with us and encouraging us uh, because you have actually used them successfully, these recommendations in your country. and. It's really uh, encouraging that you also see this as uh, this also tool as a as a as a way to to encourage this to continue by others as well. Thank you so much, Otto. Um, I see that uh, there are some aspects that uh, some of you have been complaining about the, the the connection and maybe the 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 sound in the in the channels interpretation channels. I'm sorry about that, but we cannot do anything about it. Um, I hope that most of you were able to to follow. Um, this is part of our life, <laughs> these challenges. Um, there's some questions that have been asked about how will we disseminate this tool moving forward. And we need all of you to disseminate. If you think this is a good tool uh, moving forward, uh, please disseminate it among your contacts, uh, your network, uh, and also give us feedback. If anything is unclear, if anything is missing, uh, we, we, we are want to update these tools. Uh, we're also going to start a piloting process uh, as well. So if there's really interesting interest interest in piloting it and giving us feedback in a kind of a structured way, uh, we please write to us. I I see that there are two persons who asked to speak. There is Mamadou Diallo uh, from Guinea. Guinea. Uh, I don't know if it was Guinea Conakry or Guinea Bissau. Sorry, Mamadou, je je sais plus. I think it must be Conakry. Uh, but uh, and Lira as as you black, uh, if you are also if you would like to share, you wanted to share maybe aspects that were man not mentioned so much, um, but very very briefly. One minute each, L Lira. Would you like to start? I see your hand is up, June. Yeah, uh -huh. thank you. Uh -huh. Uh, I would like to thank you for this opportunity to participate in today's meeting and share our experience in promoting the European in Kyrgyzstan. Uh, Kyrgyzstan is a Central Asia country and uh, we have been working with uh, European forces uh, 2019 and during this time I don't hear you Lira, I don't know if others hear you no, it seems that we lost the connection. Uh, Too Lira, bad. Lira, can you hear us? Uh, 
Okay, uh, uh, Laura, you're on the call as well, uh, uh, Laura Sinner. If uh, if Lira, does she if she shared the information in writing, perhaps we can uh, follow up through the writing. Otherwise, it would be great if she can type. If you have contact with Lira, would be really good that we get uh, what she wanted yes. to say. I would yeah, like to her privately. Yes. Thank you yes. so much, um, Mamadou. Uh, are you here? Vous allez parler français? Mamadou, vous m'entendez? Ah. Oui, bonjour, euh, bonsoir Laura. Ah, bonsoir Mamadou. Euh, donc, euh, ça va? Je vais juste dire à tout le monde. de te revoir. Ça va bien? Oui, ça va bien. Merci. Juste un instant, Mamadou. Oui. Je vais juste. Euh, Alors, oui, ça va instant. au niveau de la Guinée. Euh, un instant, nous Mamadou. Continuons à... Pardon? Un, un instant, Mamadou. Juste, je vais dire qu'on va parler français, euh, mais je vais traduire tout de suite après. Donc, Mamadou, très, très brièvement, s'il vous plaît. Et moi, je vais traduire après vous en anglais. So I will translate to English just after Mamadou uh, uh, finishes speaking. So you don't need to change channels. Thank you all. Oui, Mamadou, à, à, à vous. Donc, nous sommes une coalition d'ONG de défense et de promotion des droits de l'enfant en Guinée. Mamadou is uh, working for a coalition for defense of children's rights in Guinea. Nous, nous existons depuis 2007. We exist since 2007. Nous assurons le plaidoyer auprès de l'État pour, pour le respect des droits de l'enfant en Guinée. We, we advocate the state Et for nous assurons rights. aussi le suivi de la mise en œuvre de recommandations we also do follow up the sur la CDE et sur la Charte africaine of both the CRC and the African Charter. Ainsi que les protocoles facultatifs à la CDE. As well as the optional protocol to the CRC. They follow up to recommendations also from the protocols. Parmi les activités de plaidoyer, nous, nous faisons le plaidoyer pour que l'État accepte de respecter les dates de soumission des rapports périodiques. So they do advocacy to make sure the state actually respects the deadlines for submitting its own reports. Et ensuite, pour qu'il accepte de prendre des mesures adéquates pour la mise en œuvre des recommandations. And to take uh, um, the necessary actions to Et nous to avons implement. aussi assuré le plaidoyer oui, pour la révision du Code de l'enfant guinéen. And they also advocated for the revision of the child code in qui a pris en compte maintenant la définition complète des punitions corporelles. And also the abolition of corporal punishment. Et toutes les autres faiblesses qui ont été constatées dans la première version du code de l'enfant de 2007. Et uh, nous sommes aussi, nous assurons le suivi de la mise en œuvre des recommandations. And uh, they also do follow up to the implementation of the recommendations. Depuis 2012, Um, je suis désolée, mais en fait, on est à 16h30. Il faudrait qu'on ferme le, la réunion oui. bientôt. Oui. Est-ce que vous voulez dire uh, uh, un mot de, de fin, uh, juste un mot avant de terminer pour, pour, Je ne voudrais pas vous interrompre comme ça, je suis désolée. Et Laura, excuse-moi, je n'ai pas bien compris la dernière question. Je dis que si, si, si vous voulez dire uh, un dernier mot pour qu'on puisse, euh, qu puisse euh, juste dire notre, notre mot de clôture, parce qu'il faudrait qu'on termine la réunion, malheureusement. Merci de nous avoir invités à ce webinaire. Nous avons été très enrichis par les différentes expériences, d'expériences. 
parle. Donc, Thank nous you. avions une question pour oui. le comité. Pourquoi la période périodicité, ah, la périodicité oui. va passer de 5 ans à 8 ans? Euh, merci. Et Madame ensuite, oui. c'était au comité africain oui. pour dire que depuis que le, la Guinée est passée en janvier 2021, nous n'avons pas encore reçu les recommandations. Tout à fait. So, Mamadou is, uh, pardon, Mamadou, je vais traduire. Et donc, Mamadou was asking two questions. Uh, well, first, he was very happy to be part of this uh, webinar, but he also asked uh, two questions. One, uh, to the UNCRC committee, and I think it was also written uh, in the, in the Q&A box, and maybe Benoit, you have answered about why. Why are we changing the periodicity of reporting to eight years? And uh, so I hope, Benoit, you can answer that in the, I think you have answered that in writing, and if not, please do that so that um, uh, we can send these, uh, these uh, answers to, to Mamadou and all the colleagues who are wondering about this. And also, uh, Mamadou had a question to the African Committee, uh, Adiyam, to know why aren't there concluding observations, uh, why aren't there concluding observations yet uh, since 2021 uh, when the state has submitted uh, its uh, report. Uh, so that is also a question I saw in writing. So Mamadou, ces questions-là, elles ont été données par écrit aussi. Et normalement, on va partager les réponses par écrit à tous ceux qui ont participé aujourd'hui. Donc ils vont vous répondre par écrit. So I'm saying to Merci. Mamadou that uh, he will get the answers in writing. We will, we will send an, an email with all the information shared today, as well as the questions. Uh, hopefully we can translate them into French and Spanish as well to share with you. Uh, it's a challenging always uh, um, task because we are very limited resources. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to, to give, I know it's already past the time. I just want to say uh, thank you all and pass the floor to, to Mona to just close the meeting. Uh, and uh, yeah, thank you all and keep in touch. And if you will have any questions, just ask us. Uh, Mona, um, over to you. Thank you, Laura. First, I would like really to thank all our panelists, speakers, and all the participants for their very rich contribution. Very, thank you very much. You made this uh, webinar a, a successful event. Uh, so this was the fourth thematic launch, and there will be three more launches coming up this year. In July, the focus will be on how to advance children's rights using the Sustainable Development Goals, voluntary national reporting procedures. This series is by us, civil society, and for us. We therefore need you all and your colleagues and partners to get involved in the series, make it become one of our, your working platform for peer sharing and learning in order to get most of it. First of all, please visit the website and share information about the series far and wide. Feel free to disseminate and use the tools, organize trainings, webinars about them for your own context and needs. Help us improve the series and its tool. Let us know if and how you use the tools and give us feedbacks to improve them. For the specific tools, if your organization is interested in piloting it, you can please write to Laura. Uh, we'll put her contact email address in the chat box and help us keep the series growing as a platform for sector-wide child rights knowledge building. Share existence practical case studies or guidance that you really recommend other practitioners to use and let us know if you think certain areas of child rights like guidance or documented case studies. We also welcome support in translation, communication, videos, recording. Help us sustain the series through funding if your organization allows it. Please do not forget to fill the survey. I would like to thank you again, everyone for your participation and let's stay in touch. Thank you all. Take care. Thank you, Mona, so much. Thank you. We will send you a follow-up email, everyone, with the, the PowerPoint and, and as much info as